Okay, today I'm going to go over some exercises in Chapter 2 of Critical Thinking to make sure you're getting it. So I'm going to start with um, uh, Chapter 2, I mean, uh, Exercise 2-1. Uh, uh, it says the, the problem is uh, indicate which blanks would ordinarily contain premises and which would ordinarily contain conclusions. So here's an, the number 1 in Exercise 2-1. Two, A, comma, and B, therefore C. These are just, you fill these in with statements. So we're not interested in what the statements are. We're simply interested in identifying conclusions and, 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 and uh, premises. So first of all, when you look at this, the key word here is the word therefore, right? And if you remember in chapter two, therefore ha is called a conclusion indicator. So make sure you know what conclusion indicators are. Conclusion indicators are very important when it comes to identifying of uh, uh, conclusions of arguments. Anything that comes after the word therefore is going to be a conclusion. It's a conclusion, therefore is a conclusion indicator. Other, another indi a conclusion indicator would be the word thus, thus C, or it follows that C. So these are very important uh, words to be familiar with. Um, when you're trying to identify how an argument is working, if you can identify conclusion indicators, that will tell you what the conclusion is. Okay, so I'm going to diagram this argument now because we uh, in chapter two also talks about di diagramming. So if you're going to diagram this, the conclusion of the of this argument would be C. So I'll put C at the bottom. The reason we are to believe C is because of A. There's a comma after A. It's not because of A and B. It's because of A itself is a reason. So I'll put A is coming down to here. And also another reason is B, okay? Okay, this here is the conclusion. In these diagrams, the conclusion always goes at the bottom. Um, okay, so this tells you that the, this, is, this is a picture of this argument up here. Notice that the conclusion is C and C is at the bottom of the diagram. A is a reason to believe C, and B is a reason to believe C. So this is a, an argument that has A and B as premises, and C is a conclusion. It doesn't tell us what A and B are. It doesn't give it content. We're not interested in that, right? Just interested in being able to diagram them and identify conclusions and premises. Okay, so let me do the, we'll go to number two. This is exercise two, uh, slash one or dash one okay number two it goes like this it goes a so that's some some statement we don't know what it is doesn't matter we're just trying to diagram it so comma since b comma c Okay, A period, so comma, since B, C. So how, first of all, we need to, before we could diagram, we have to figure out what are the premises and what are the conclusions? Well, the word so is one of these conclusion indicators. It's like, therefore, it could have said A, therefore. <clears throat> it says so, so is a conclusion indicator. The word since, is a premise indicator so it's very important to be able to just remember that i mean it's a, a, chapter two talks about it and so you know make sure you understand the difference between premise indicators and conclusion indicators because if you do understand that it'll make it very easy to you know figure out what the argument is so since bc so what do you think the conclusion of that argument is there, it's going to be over here somewhere, but we know it's not going to be B because what comes after since is going to be a premise. The conclusion is going to be, therefore, C. <clears throat> so we'll put C at the bottom. <clears throat> I'll write the word conclusion just because some, you know, some people when they do this, they put the diagram sideways and they, sometimes they put the conclusion at the top. <clears throat> it really doesn't matter where you put the conclusion, just so long as the reader, your, who's, ever, who's ever looking at... <clears throat> at the diagram knows what the conclusion is, you know, where the arrows are going. 
So I'll, I'll write the word conclusion next to where it is. Okay, so we are to believe C. Well, one, one reason is because of A. So A goes down to C and B. Now, since B, C. So B is a reason. So that's the diagram right there. That's how we diagram that. So in chapter two, there's uh, about three pages that deal with diagrams, these pictures. So make, you know, make sure you uh, do the exercise. If you're having problems with these, make sure you do the exercise. Look in the back of the book or email me. Ask me a question. I'll try to explain it. Okay, but so you, know, you need to take the time. Make sure you get this. Okay, let's look at number C, uh, three. Uh, number three is, goes like this. It goes A. Again, these stand for statements. A. Clearly. A clearly. After all. Comma B. This what this means is A clearly means clearly A is the case. After all or since B. So the conclusion is, this is the conclusion, A, so put A at the bottom, and and the reason is because of B, so B comes down to A, and that's the conclusion, B down to A, okay? All right, so after all, functions as a premise indicator, okay, now, Number four, this is exercise two, one. Since, we know it's senses. Since is a premise indicator. So we know what's going to come after this word is going to be a premise. Since A and B. So this is, you know, it's a, it doesn't say since A comma. It says since A and B, meaning they both have to be true. Since A and B comma. The commas are very important because they, they tell you how to group things together. C. Okay. So if you look at that, what do you think the... Can, we know these are premises here because it comes after since. Since A and B, C. This is the conclusion. So you put C. In this case here, it's going to be A plus B. A plus B. That's the conclusion. We know it's the plus because they both have to be true. It, it, you, it's not, this argument is not saying C because of A and B like this. Because that would mean that we are to believe C because of just even if B wasn't here, we, A is itself is a reason. But that doesn't say that. It says we are to believe C because of A and B. They have to both be true. Okay. So this is not really that difficult, but it's very important to understand it. Um, if you don't understand it, you're going to be totally lost. So, you know, if you understand it, then go on. You know, just, but again, in the book, it has these little orange triangles. So, you know, look at those triangles. The back of the book gives you the answers. So when you're reading this book, um, I can't go over all the exercises, but the, the, in the back of the book, there are hundreds of answers to problems. And just you look at the orange triangle in the, in the questions, that will tell you that the answer is in the back of the book. So make, that's up to you, you know, to do. To, I, that's, I'm not, that's not written homework. It's up for you to uh, make sure you understand it. Okay, so number five goes A. So that's a statement, A. Period. Consequently. Consequently is a conclusion indicator. It's like therefore. It's a conclusion. It tells you that a conclusion is consequently. Consequently, comma, B, comma, since C and D. C and D. Okay, since C and D, there's no comma there, so we need it's 
consequently B. So we know whatever comes after consequently is going to be a conclusion. So we're going to put the conclusion B at the bottom. That's the conclusion. We know that we are to believe that B because of A. So A comes down to B. And also because of C and D. So we have another line like this and C and D. The plus means that we need both of them together. The plus means when you see a like C plus D, it's these are dependent reasons. Dependent. It's not enough simply to have C, but they depend upon one another. That's why they're called dependent reasons. Notice that A is separated from these. A is called an independent reason. So it's very important to be able to distinguish independent from dependent reasons. Okay. All right. So that's exercise 2.1. In the 10th edition, if you if you have the 11th edition, it'll be the same questions, but it might be, it'll probably be the same exercise too. When 11th edition, some of the exercises are a little different, but they're still the same exercises. So I think in both editions, it's exercise two one. Okay, now, you know, so this week, next week we're going to be doing chapter three. So this week, uh, hopefully you've all read chapter two. And you've spent some time going over the exercises, checking your checking the answers in the back of the book. You don't have to check all of them. Basically, uh, some of the uh, there's a lot of repetition, so a lot of these exercises will say will the assignment will be the same. Identify the premises and the conclusion. If you're doing an exercise and you do six problems or seven problems and you get everyone right, that tells you something. It tells you that you understand it. All right, so there's no reason to to go over all the questions. I mean, it's like two and two is four, you know, that's three, you know, you don't need to go over a million uh, questions. Just make sure you uh, check the answers in the back of the book to make sure you understand it. If you don't understand it, then go back and read it and, you know, and make sure, and don't go on to the next thing until you really understand it. Exercise two, two says identify premises and conclusion. I'm, I'm going to skip that one because we we're, we I did we're, that's what exercise one one what two one was about and and, and whatever we're going to do is good. we're going to be doing the premises and conclusions exercise two three identify premises we'll skip that now I want to go to exercise two four okay this is important um, well I got a couple of minutes here because uh, so let me I'll do a couple of them five of these items are intended to be deductive and five are going to be inductive. So we'll do a few of these. Um, this is uh, exercise 2.4 in your book. The first one goes like this. We're, we want to know whether it's an inductive argument or a deductive argument. Number one, exercise 2.4. No maiten, M-A-Y-T-E-N, no maiten trees deciduous and all non-deciduous trees are evergreens. It follows that all maiten trees are evergreens. Now, what type of argument is that? Well, this is, is it's either going to be inductive or deductive. If it's de de deductive, it means that there, the claim, at least, is that it, the conclusion logically follows from the premises. So this is taking the form of no, I'll just use uh, the letters, no maiden trees. No maiden tree is delicious. I'll put D. Uh, all non-deciduous, all non-D. No non-deciduous trees are evergreen, so I'll just put E. And then the conclusion is it follows that all maiden trees, so all M, are E. Now, this is what's called a syllogism. You could see, you could see what the intention is. They're intending that this statement here is going to logically follow from no something, all something, therefore it's going to be all something. The, this argument here is, is uh, deductive. Okay, that's all for today. Gonna, I'll continue. I'll do some more. So this is just part one of the exercise, chapter two. I'll, I'll do another a couple more videos.